We are going to take you through the terminals and operation of an ES 300 slash 500 slash 302 slash 502 classic control board. On the left hand side of the control board you're going to see a terminal with spade connectors for transformer marked TRAN and also spade connectors for a battery marked BATT positive and negative. The only power that is required for this control board is the TRAN. The transformer is a 24 volt 50 VA AC transformer. It reduces 120 volts AC to 24 volts AC. It does not convert it to DC. This is the DC converter. I'm going to plug in the incoming power Note you should hear a beep when you plug in the power. Lights will blink temporarily and then turn off. If using a backup battery, you will connect two 12 volt batteries that are wired in series to create 24 volts to battery positive and negative. Along the bottom of the control board, there are two terminals for light output. This is for a flashing low voltage lamp during operation of the gate. When the gate is moving open or moving closed, output power is pulsed from these terminals to make a lamp flash. The next two terminals are motor one. Motor one are the power leads for your primary operator arm or your only operator arm for a single gate opener. Motor two. If using a dual gate opener, you will utilize the motor 2 power terminals. If utilizing a single gate opener, these two terminals will not be used. This is the limit 1 terminal block. This is where the limit switches get connected for the primary operator arm for a dual gate and the only operator arm for a single gate. For a dual gate, the limit 1 block must be paired with the wires that are leading to motor one. So you should be able to trace the motor one terminals down to a wire sheath that also contains the limit wires that are leading to limit one. Notice the labelings OL1, COM1, and CL1. OL1 stands for open limit for limit one. CL1 stands for closed limit for limit one. Limit 2. This is the limit switch connection for a dual gate opener, the secondary leaf. This also has an OL2 and a CL2 and in the center a COM2. That is open limit for the second operator, close limit for the second operator and the COM. Limit 2 must be connected to the same wires that are leading to motor 2. The motor 2 power wires should be traced back to a sheath that also has coming out of that sheath the limit wires leading to limit 2. If you are using a single gate operator, limit 2 will not be used. The next terminal block is photocell. It contains four terminals. First note that we have an exaggerated jumper wire in these first two terminals. We did this for demonstration so you can see what a jumper is. It is a connection between one terminal to the next terminal. We have this in place because in order to operate there must be a safety device connected to these terminals that close the circuit at all times. When the safety device is tripped the circuit will be opened and PH will display on the control board. This indicates the safety device has detected an obstruction and the gate should not close. If not using a safety device such as a photo eye, you must have these terminals connected in order to operate, hence the jumper. 
If the jumper is not present, the board will react as if there is an obstruction in front of the photo eye at all times and will not operate. The next two terminals are V positive and positive 24 V. V positive is a 12 volt output. It is meant for one device, mainly photo eyes, for powering purposes. Positive 24 volt is for all other accessories for powering purposes. The positive 24 volt terminal is fused. I will indicate that fuse later. The positive V positive is not fused. Do not put more than one device on the V positive because it is not fused. You do not want to overwork that circuit. The next terminal block is the push block. The push block contains a push 1, a COM, and a push 2. Push 1 will contain things such as a receiver, keypad, push button, or any other device that you want to be able to open the gate and close the gate. Push 2 will contain devices that can only open the gate, such as an exit sensor or an exit loop. If the gate is open, a trigger on push to and com will not close the gate intentionally. The last terminal block is E-lock. This is a power output for an electric lock. If it is a solenoid lock, such as the estate swing low impact gate lock, you can connect the two leads from the lock directly to these terminals. If it is a mag lock, which is a magnetic gate lock, you could utilize these terminals to trigger a relay that will then disconnect power to the lock from an independent transformer. The red dip switch block in the center with the white dip switches have three different controls for your gate operation. Dip switch one is for auto reclose. This turns auto reclose on and off. Up position is on, down position is off. Auto reclose is a countdown. When the gate reaches the open position, it will count down according to the parameter setting that you have set for a time and then automatically close the gate. If you have the dip switch off, it works like a garage door opener where the gate will go open and remain open until it gets another signal to close. This will override any setting in the parameter settings. Dip switch two is for single or dual gate. Up is for a dual gate. Down is for a single gate. Dip switch three is for the E-lock. Note before we mentioned that this terminal is where you would hook up a lock. In order for power to come out of this terminal, you must have dip switch 3 in the up or on position. If it is down, it will not put out any power through this terminal block. There are three buttons on the control board. Set, button 1, and button 2. Set is for programming purposes of your parameters. There are six parameters. When you press set, P1 will display. You can check the P1 parameter by pressing button 1 or button 2. Button 2 will decrease the number of that parameter. Button 1 will increase the parameter. Please note, when you press button 1 or button 2 to check the parameter, you are also changing that parameter by one digit when you press that button. Parameter 1 is your runtime. The runtime should be longer than it takes to get from the close to the open limit switch. You should set this at least 5 seconds above the time it takes for windy days and cold days when the gate operator may be running slower. The runtime is in existence in order to have a slowdown time. Without a runtime, you cannot set parameter 2 to have a slowdown time. We will now proceed to parameter 2 
To change to the next parameter after you have selected your setting for the existing parameter, press the set button. It will now show P2 on display and we are on parameter 2. Again, you press button 1 or button 2 to change the parameter or view it. Parameter 2 is your slowdown time. Once 11 seconds has expired, the motors will receive three-quarter power and move at a slower pace for a gentle ending to the cycle. You can change that 11 seconds with button 1 or button 2. You should have an understanding of your full run time in order to set a slowdown time. During operation of the gate, you will notice it will say open or OP and begin counting until it reaches the limit switch. If you observe this counting, you will know the runtime. You can then set your P1 parameter above that runtime to make sure you have room to make adjustments to the slowdown and then select how many seconds you want it to run fast for before it goes into slowdown mode. Once we've selected your P2 setting, you can press set to proceed on to P3. P3 is your force setting. This is how much force it will take to obstruct your gate. An obstruction is when your gate operator comes into contact with an obstacle, it stops and reverses. P3 is a very important setting for normal operation. If this setting is too low, the gate operator may not operate. You have to take into consideration things such as weight of your gate, the how well your gate swings, wind resistance, and other factors to choose the right force setting. If you choose too low of a force setting, you might see obstructions when nothing is in the path of the gate. Typically, the setting will be somewhere between 20 and 25. P4 is the delay between leafs. For a dual gate operation, one leaf can start before the other one. This is useful for gate locks and overlaps. Typically, you set this at a number around three or four seconds. The master leaf will always start first on the opening and close second on the closing. P5 is your lock output time. This will only be relevant if your number three dip switch is in the up position to enable the board to put power out of the lock terminal block. You can select an amount of time you want power to be output for. Longer gates may need a longer output to get the leaf sufficiently apart so the gate lock remains unlatched long enough for the gates to open. P6 is your auto reclose time. If your dip switch 1 is in the on position, this time is relevant for how long the gate will stay open before it automatically starts to close. There is no right or wrong to this time, however a very popular one is 10 seconds. But take into consideration the vehicles that will be entering your property. If there are horse trailers or other things of this nature, it may take longer to navigate your driveway and you may wish to leave the gate open longer. Whenever using auto reclose, it is recommended that you use a photo eye to ensure that the gate will not automatically close on a vehicle that is in the path of the gate. Once you finish programming, you press the set button and it will beep three times and go back to normal operation. Once out of programming, button one and button two act the same as the push one terminal 
in a push to terminal with button one mimicking the connection between push one and com and button two mimicking the connection between push two and com. These can be used to open your gate during the setup procedure. On the right hand side of the board there are prongs. These prongs are where the receiver clip slides onto. The red wire should be on the bottom. Do not connect your receiver clip until the loose end of the wires are already connected to your receiver. If these wires touch after connected to the board, it will short out your board. On the left hand side of the board, there are three fuse boxes. The fuse boxes are hinged on the top and clipped on the bottom. You take a small screwdriver, press in, pull down, you can open the fuse box. The first fuse is the protection for the 24 volt output on the photocell block. The second fuse is a protection for the motor 2 terminal. The third fuse is a protection for the motor 1 terminal. If you are operating the gate and the board is counting as if the gate should be moving and one of the motors is not moving, check these fuses first as the most likely scenario.